Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. I am Abdul Majid Shirazi. I have my friend Sahil with me. We are back again uh, for the next episode on Surah Kahf. Uh, I'll just like to uh, summarize a bit about our last uh, discussion. It was uh, based on the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi where uh, he said that uh, the three surahs were uh, revealed together as a triad, like uh, Surah Bani Israel, whose other name is uh, Surah uh, Isra al Miraj, and then uh, is Surah Kahf, and the third one is Surah Maryam. Um, our guest, my friend Sahil, last time explained that uh, to truly understand Surah Kahf, we have to understand a few things from Bani Israel and a few things from Surah Maryam. Uh, in Surah uh, Bani Israel, you mentioned uh, the Surah mentions uh, the night journey of Rasulullah So our friend uh, he mentioned that that was done that journey uh, the night journey uh, wa- uh, to the seventh sky was done using portals, two kinds of portals, one in the horizontal direction from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem, and then uh, the other one was a vertical trajectory from Jerusalem uh, to the skies. And uh, then in Surah Maryam, we discussed uh, the intergalactic traveling of uh, Hazrat Idris alayhi salam, and that him being the first person to be given uh, the power to write and use the pen uh, for the first time to record uh, the knowledge on paper or whatever material he was using. Uh, and he was traveler, uh, also a traveler, intergalactic traveler. So these two things were uh, discussed last time. Uh, I would uh, request my friend Sahil to please uh, move this discussion forward. Uh, with my first question here um, is going to be that <clears throat> you mentioned uh, portals. Uh, first thing I would uh, want to ask you is to describe portal a bit. For I know like uh, most of the, most of us know what the portals are, but I would like him to give a brief explanation of what a portal is for those who don't know. And uh, also cover in this that there's a story of a man uh, in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 259, uh, who asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how would you recreate or uh, give life to us again once we die. And uh, then the guy, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes him die for 100 years. And when he wakes up, he sees a donkey whose even carcass has almost turned to dust. And him and his food is still fresh. So kindly in the light of all these things can you explain portal time travel death these concepts a bit well first uh, these three surahs were not revealed together uh, of course they were revealed yeah. differently uh, the prophet sallam actually clubbed them together yeah. uh, in uh, for since he's the one who compiled yeah uh, of course uh, and then uh, uh, he has this hadith with the uh, umul mu'mineen where he actually describes these as a, you know a set of the uh, a set of great three surahs. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, portal. I think it's uh, it's it's a, it's a very uh, complicated concept since uh, Quran Pak uh, specifies these sort of uh, traveling platforms differently. Mm-hmm. For example, uh, <coughs> when the angels are traveling, uh, mm-hmm. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has actually literally given us a time differential of how how fast they actually travel through mm-hmm. them. And uh, it's uh, a, a relative uh, time scale that Allah has given for, for this planet uh, versus the, the, the kind of time angels actually take. Now, since uh, human psychology, as a Muslim psychology, because we believe in the Quran, we specifically are not psychologically trained to put angels in any sort of a portal. Yeah. When we think angels come down, we think they come down like a space shuttle come down. There's yeah, no, yeah. there's no, because, uh, you know, when you look at the trajectory of the airplanes, there yeah. are actually road, roads that they actually tra- travel to. There are fly zones yeah, and there are yeah, no fly zones. Yeah. And then there are optimum distances. Yeah. Uh, and every pilot knows that. Yeah. And uh, we have those lines drawn on the, mm-hmm. on the globe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for a space shuttle, there is no optimum distance except the vertical line, right? Yeah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not really specify like that. Our psychology is like that. So, for example, when we say the Prophet Sallallahu was, uh, you know, being uh, ridiculed at Taif, but Jibreel Sallallahu comes down, we don't really think that a portal opens and, you know, and then a portal opens here and there and then Jibreel, I mean, comes down, even yeah. though that's the fastest way of traveling. So, yeah. it was yeah. a portal that actually <coughs> Jibreel, I mean, used. Mm-hmm. Because the Quran actually specifies that this is how fast, and specifically when Amrullah, Amr of Allah is actually 
to, to come down. Uh, the angels actually take that is the hukum. command of it is the hukum, the yeah, hukum, of hukum. and then they, of course this is a hukum. Uh, yeah. Jibreel does not really move yeah. on his own accord. Yeah, yeah. So uh, psychologically speaking, it's a very tough concept to swallow that there are portals. Yeah. First and foremost, why is there a portal? Yeah. Because psychologically, because for us, we just think that the angels can fly, yeah, so they are using the same dimension yeah. to go yeah. up and down. However, the Quran actually specifies, and uh, this is not just the Quran, even the Hadith yeah. specify that, you know, uh, that, uh, let me just give you an example. Uh, when the Miraj happened, they went from Kaaba to Baitul Yeah. Okay. Why didn't you just say, go take off from Kaaba? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there was a reason why uh, they, they actually took off. So, the argument is always made that, oh, well, it was the first uh, of the commandments that was revealed at that time. So Jews were told through this journey that now your reign is over and now Islam is taken over. This is exactly yeah. the philosophy of Muslim scholars. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, the, the real question is, uh, why didn't they take off from Battle uh, Muqaddas, uh, Masjid Aqsa? They didn't take off from there. They yeah. took off from the Dome of the Rock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, a, that's a question I have to ask because that has no significance in terms of mm. the, the, you know, the, the reign of uh, Judaism too. You know, that now we're overthrowing your reign and now, you know, the crown yeah. is uh, back to where it belongs. Yeah. Because so, Masjid Aqsa was supposed to be that, yeah. that, that, yeah. that, that, that place. So, so, do you know, like, where does this concept come from actually? Like, do we have anything in the Hadith or in the Tafsir regarding this? Like, the reign of Ju Judaism, Ju Jews is Oh, this is a commentary of so many scholars that, you know, the real... So, it's a personal opinion. Yeah, yeah, scholars, yeah. It's yeah. not Hadith, nor There's no Hadith. Quranic. Quranic. I don't even, I don't, because but I can't just disregard it because so mm. many scholars believe in this. But mm. the real uh, co commentary on uh, this <clears> specific uh, journey from Baitullah uh, to uh, Baitul Muqaddas is the fact that that's a declaration that no more of... Uh, your misconception that you are still carrying the Isra of the planet now. Mm. Now we've taken the Isra. Mm. Hence, Hazrat Musa came in behind the, mm. the congregation although there. I, although I remember, like, there's, uh, there's another thing where the Sahaba, during the Salah, had to face from Jerusalem to Kaaba. And that was a Muslim internal, that's, that's an internal Muslims. matter for Muslims. Okay. Since Jews didn't really care. Yeah. Of why did you shift from Bethlehem Qaddas to Kaaba all of a sudden during a prayer? That yeah. was a test of the Iman of the Sahaba at that time who were, you know, who were really, because that was an Arabian thing. Yeah, you know, and that actually that may make sense that you know, and if for this hadith on that, because some people in that prayer when Prophet ﷺ shifted his face, yeah, uh, they had a, a bit of a confusion or a problem. Yeah, uh, but but that's a totally different story, so yeah. it has nothing to do with this. So, but this this specific concept mm -hmm. should have, uh, according to the commentary, should have taken place uh, at Baitul uh, Masjid Aqsa. Yeah. It didn't. It's just like 500 yards out of Masjid Aqsa, that yeah. Dome of the Rock. And that Dome of the Rock has a lot of significance in terms of time travel and portals in Judaism. Okay. Dome of the Rock is a, a, not just an ordinary place. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it carries a lot of significance. However, since I'm not going to go into Israeliyad and, you know, all Judaic yeah. Uh, yeah. Concept, concepts, I'm just going to stick to the, the Muslim concept of portal. Now, uh, since we know Maharaj is the, the trajectory, the, the, pla the portals of the angels, that is specified in the Quran. So the portal does exist literally like that. So is it like a hole in a space-time? Uh, well, that's up to our own imagination. Yeah. However, uh, we have to really go into what is the actual nature of the angel and how, how yeah. you know, because literally speaking, uh, as far as my psychology is concerned, uh, there is no need for an angel for any specific pathway. But since Allah specifies it, now it's a part of my Iman mm -hmm. to not carry my current psychology and break it. That yeah. you know, It's not just a haphazard movement. It's not, it's not, uh, it is, there are pathways and there are rules yeah. of this whole, you know, uh, movement and, and, and transference and, you know, transcendence or ascents. There's their rules. That means physics, literally yeah. physics is applied. Those rules and laws are applied. If yeah. it were not physics, Though no time differential would have been given according to whatever, you, you know, mm -hmm. 50,000 years on earth yeah. is a day of, uh, that's, of that's, angel, that's yeah. pure physics. <clears throat> now that does literally put physics inside Quran in, yeah. and sh we should put physics inside our psychology. Yeah. Now that's an article of our faith. It's not a, a, a it's a very sensitive wow. concept. Yeah. Okay. We can't just say, you know what, uh, Whenever Jibreel wants, he just comes down. No, there are pathways he comes down. Well, of course, he can come down on his own accord, but mm -hmm. he can't just come out from anywhere. 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's not a genie concept. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in our psychology, it's like, poof, you go get out from here, yeah. and, you know. So there, there are ways. And to further strengthen this specific psychology, in Surah Kahf is the first surah mm -hmm. where Zulkarnain was given the ways. Yeah. The ways. Now, that literally does not mean anything else other than the portal because Fa'atba Usababa is the next uh, ayah which literally says that now he wants, we gave him the ways. He gave him the ways, yeah. Now, and then he follows the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He follows one of the ways towards the yeah. setting of the sun and then yeah. he goes towards the, uh, the, the origination of the sun I and so him, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <clears throat> the portal itself. The, what does it look like? How many kinds are there? Well, we know of one for sure. That's marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, we know of a very high possibility of the other. That's sababa. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in the Quran, so many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this word, this root word of sab, in so many, uh, 10 specific occasions. All of those occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, Quran is speaking about ways towards the heavens. Ways towards the heavens. Okay. Now, we have to make sure that we understand that if marriage is a concept, then yeah. why, what, why is the problem of us actually understanding that there is a possibility? There are other ways. And then in Surah Mulk, when Allah Ta'ala says, we have placed these heavens in parallel to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And these universes. And then uh, in Surah Mulk, Allah Ta'ala himself says, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that we've adorned this sky of this, this planet. planet yeah. Yeah. With, with those lamps, yeah. which are the stars. Yeah. Yeah. That means there are other skies. Yeah. And in, in, the, in, in, in uh, the hadith of the Miraj, Prophet ﷺ meets Adam Islam on this sky. And then yeah. he goes to the next one, he meets uh, Yusuf uh, and, uh, and then uh, Harun Islam, and then uh, Isa Islam, and then Idris Islam, and then you know, uh, Musa, and then Ibrahim Islam. Yeah. So these are certain different uh, heavens. So, there is a physical, physical proof of the presence of all of these separate, uniquely, identifiably different places and, and entities. And then, then, you know, you can actually place the marriage during or between all of these. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, you know, uh, I can go on for, for days on this one, yeah. but, you know, you, you, you get the, the actual uh, specificity. Yeah. of our belief of portals hmm. and these pathways. So now, I guess I, now here, our concept and the concept of science is a lot similar here. Like it's a pathway. I doubt it. I'll tell you why. Uh, well, yeah, on, 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 on a yeah. basic level, yeah, there yeah. is a pathway. Yeah. But if you read the, the old civilization texts and we, we go through uh, ancient history, we see that there were, they didn't believe in portals. Hmm. They believed in uh, gateways. They did not really believe that, you know, uh, according to, if I take that psychology of ancient civilization, uh, you know, interstellar movement and put it in the Muslim psychology, it would seem like this. That Zulkarnain did not have to go through a journey. He just traveled through a dimension. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He opened a door and he was right there in the... In the, with the people who were talking about, you know, that we do not have any protection from the sun. Okay. And then he opened the portal... And he went through the gateway. It was like a less than a second, less than a second, uh, you know, what's the word? Transference yeah. of the whole thing. Now, there could be it. I, I don't know. But, you know, it doesn't really matter whether yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a horn shaped portal or it's, it's, it's that, that, you know, Spiral, swirling uh, seashell. Yeah, it yeah. could be anything. But the fact that it does exist in Islamic psychology yeah. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is uh, yeah. telling us to keep that in your psychology, yeah. then I, I, in my personal opinion, it is not Islamic hmm. to think that, oh my God, this is just science and, you know, this is something in, innovatively yeah. put inside our psychology. I'm sorry, this is not how it works. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, okay, so now I think uh, we can move on to Surah Kahf. Uh, my first... Uh, before before mm -hmm. we move into that, uh, we didn't really discuss uh, the, the multi-dimensional map of the universe. Okay. For, for that, we need to understand that uh, there is a vertical line that you can draw. If I draw, draw a line from, from a, on a y-axis, that's, mm -hmm. that's a one-dimensional line. And then mm -hmm. I put an x-axis line, that's a two-dimensional yeah. line. Yeah. Now, our brains are trained to think on one, two, three, four dimensions. But since we know the concept of jinn... Mm -hmm. 
we have a very and that's a muslim belief we know that surah jin itself exists in the quran so you know yeah. even if there were uh, some the hadith hadith doesn't really matter because quran himself we are muslims have to believe that there are jinns yeah but where are they <clears throat> the quran allah says that they can see you from a place you cannot see them from yeah so that means there is a physical concept of dimension in the quran as well yeah you know what I'm and that's not an an x y dimension yeah and that's not an XYZ dimension as well. Yeah. That is a parallel dimension. Because if it was a Z dimension, then we would have, we would have felt them. Yeah. We can't even feel them. And we cannot see them. We can see the Z dimension. We are all 3D people. Yeah. Now, we cannot see that. That means that there is a totally different way of looking at dimensions. Because yeah. if someone can see me, there is absolutely no possibility in physics that I cannot see them. Unless, of course, it's at a quantum level. Or it at such a grand level that I am overwhelmed by the very sight of it. Mm. That's physics. But that's not what Allah Ta'ala is saying. Allah Ta'ala is saying there are millions of jinns and there are Muslims and there are Christians and there, yeah. you know, there's a colony and there's a, co- uh, and a population. And then they are living among you and there you cannot see them and they can see you. Yeah. From places there they're looking at you. That means, that's the actual word. They yeah. look at you from places you cannot see. Yeah. And then we actually have... Uh, um, a company of jinns coming to Rasulullah Sallallahu exactly, after they yes. heard the Quran. And, and that means the Prophet Sallallahu could see them. He yeah. met them. The Sahaba were told to stay back. Yeah. And Abu Bakr Siddiq himself said, I was there when this happened. And we couldn't see who he was talking to. Yeah. But he was talking to the jinnat because then Prophet Sallallahu came back and he told them that this was a, this yeah. was a delegation that actually had yeah. and an yeah. appointment set up. Yeah. And then uh, Surah Jinim itself, uh, when it starts, Kul uh, ilayya Anna means we heard. They said that we heard the Quran. Quran yeah. Prophet was reading, reciting mm. the Quran, and Kul uhiya ilayya Anna ustama fakalu jinna. That we, they said that oh, we've heard something so weird. Yeah. They could hear us as well. It's yeah. not just that they can Seeing, see us. Yes, hearing as well. Ajaba, yeah. There's something weird. Something weird. Yeah. Of course, that weird is uh, the. The astonishing miracle of the linguistic of the Quran, I can, I can sense that. Yeah, yeah. But they cannot just see, they can hear us. That means they're not that grand or not, not that microscopic. This, this is something which is... <coughs> I'm sorry. You know, when this Corona thing was going on, people were like, yeah, you know, there could be the jinn and the shayateen and all that. It could be, but it doesn't really seem as if, you know, there's just one way of looking at them. Yeah. And then when the Prophet was uh, talking to them, it would have been a little more uh, easier for Abu Bakr Siddiq to explain that he was looking at his hand or in the air at, at some, some microscopic things. Yeah. But, you know, it, it doesn't really seem as if uh, that is the, the psychology we should see. if he was talking to a proper figure in front of him. Yeah, if not his own size yeah. or, uh, you know, in a relative dimension or, or yeah. proportion where, you know, it's not that yeah. uh, uh, weird. Yeah. So uh, probably maybe they came in our dimension or Rasulullah Sallam was given this power to look into their dimension for that time period. Yeah, since Prophet Sallam has very clear uh, hadith about what kind of genes there are, three kinds of genes, people, uh, genes mm-hmm. who actually change shapes, yeah. genes, you know, and so on and so forth. There are so many uh, accounts of uh, him describing what jinn actually is all about. Mm-hmm. And there's a, another thing like this, like for example, we know that in our hadith that once a person is in the grave, uh, he'll be able to see his future after the day of resurrection, whether he's going to Jannah or the Jahannam. Yeah, Jahannan. that's a very good point. And he can see and that window is going to open and he can see his home or his dwelling. Yeah. Whether it's in fire or it's in Jannah. Yeah. Well, well I'll, 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 I'll refer to that when, uh, here. Yeah. And there's that's an, the same window that opens up in uh, Surah Kaf as well. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm so excited to, uh, to, uh, to well, discuss that. Well, not same, that. but that's the same psychology that, mm-hmm. you know, that triggers. And then we have another thing. Uh, I, I heard this from somewhere. I don't know how authentic it is. That Rasulullah Sallallahu at the time of, uh, I don't know, it was a specific time or it was a routine uh, prayer. W- uh, once he was in the ruku, yeah. so he got to see the... It's authentic, yeah. Some, uh, it's authentic, yeah? yeah it's, so it's he gen, got yeah. to see the fruits from Jannah and then oh, okay, he no, no. went again to pluck them, but then he couldn't, maybe some something. And then when he was asked that you did two rukus. The, the eclipse prayer. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the eclipse, eclipse prayer. That was the eclipse, yeah. But, but uh, we talk, talk to you talking about the jinn, because yeah. there was a jinn during yeah. the prayer as well. The Prophet said, I would have grabbed him, 
But then I was uh, a little shy of the promise of <laughs> Suleiman, my brother. That only he said that only I should be able to grab and control the jinn. Subhanallah. You know okay. So you know, he said I would have just grabbed him and put him in a a bag or something. <laughs> uh, but uh, I didn't. I let him, you know, play around. Yeah. So yeah, this is a portal that opened in front hmm. of the Prophet because he said that. Did you not notice me moving a little farther hmm. and then moving a little back because he saw uh, Amr bin Nuhail Khuzai. Uh, in the same uh, hadith, first he saw the Jannah and he said the fruit was so near to me that I was about to pluck him. And then I saw hell and I saw Omar bin Rahil Khuzai picking his intestines and putting him back in his belly from the ground. Okay. You know? And then he moves, uh, moves a step behind. Hmm. So he moves one step forward and one step backward okay. during the prayer. And okay. this is what the hadith is, uh, you know. So that means, you know, he could... He could but that's the hadith which literally com connects with the Miraj hadith because Miraj is another exactly. portal and yeah. there's, you know, this open, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. you know, Salatu Miraj al yeah. which means that every, exactly. yeah. every moment uh, can actually go through that trajectory. We take it metaphorically, that, yeah. you know, it's just a figure yeah. of speech that, yeah, yeah that's your maximum ascent yeah, yeah. when you are in So prayer. what stops us to limit this w meaning of this hadith, as Salatu Miraj The psychology. The very yeah. psychology of us not accepting portals as a, an Islamic concept and we actually divorce it. Yeah. And call it a scientific <clears throat> concept. We we cannot divorce this this word portal as Muslims. I think science just came up with it. We already had that concept, and it's not just meaning, but application, yeah. and its description, and its use. That application in the Quran and the Hadith. Yeah, yeah. That's why a salat al miraj moment does not really hold any 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 physical yeah. value. Yeah. To, to, to While in physical or scientific terminology, it's gonna be it, it can hold a meaning like. I believe a in this. Prayer is a portal to a movement. I believe that uh, the, during the ascension. time of the Jal, uh, prayer is the way Mu'mineen are going to. Escape. Uh, well, not escape, but know where to go and where what is coming from. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, this is this is not just a small. It's actually matter. very interesting. Like it has been uh, right in front of our eyes for all this time, but we never looked into these things uh, this way. Yeah. Okay, yes, so if we're psychology. if we're done now, we can move on to Surah Al Kahf. So first of yeah, uh, that's your first uh, question. First thing, yeah, that's just a big uh, question. So yeah. uh, so the first thing I would like to ask you to just give us a little so background sorry, before before why I was talking about dimensions and all of those things and jinnat. Yeah. So that yeah, so that we can understand that it's not just uh, it's a lot of ways in a lot of angles. Yeah. I we could be opening a portal to a dimension, yeah. and we'll still be here in terms of our our, our movement. Yeah. And still be going to a totally different universe because I just would be moving an inch out of yeah. this dimension and I'm gone. Yeah. Or I could be traveling millions and millions of miles literally through a mirage yeah. and would, would be, you know, would be uh, just like as a normal airplane does. Yeah. But with intensely high speed and absolutely no change in my physical attribute. Yeah. So these are many concepts. We can't just, you know, uh, yeah. you know stick a concept of portal into a, yeah. an ascension and you know, just uh, going to Saturn or, or, or the seventh heaven. Yeah. Yeah. We could yeah. be using a portal to just yeah. uh, traverse through a, a certain dimension. Yeah. And I'll be invisible here, yeah. but I'll be, you know, still here. Uh, still here. Yeah. That's why I mentioned the story of a man. Yeah. Who's, uh, uh, yeah. Attribute donkey to Zayr al Islam. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So Surah Kahaf, would you like give us some background? Why was it revealed? That's going to be my first question. Sure, yeah. I think uh, this is uh, the, the base through which we should set our psychology. I think Surah Kahaf was revealed uh, at such a time with, with such an amazing... Because uh, there are no coincidences. This is, this is not a chance. And that too, the Surah of Quran cannot be revealed just because, oh, you know what? Uh, since you guys came in and asked a question, let's just reveal a surah. Uh, uh, our rub does yeah, not work yeah, like this. Yeah. Uh, That's well, actually a, a lot deeper concept. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we, way we bigger think, deeper. Yeah. yeah. So we will we'll come to that because that concept is also covered in Surah Kaf. It's so amazing. Okay. Uh, you know the concept of Inshallah uh, is in. Oh yeah, in, in, yeah, yeah, exactly. In, in, yeah. In, in, so this is something yeah. which is so big that. Uh, uh, you know, we, we better understand how the psychological placement of a Muslim should be. So, Surah Ka was revealed uh, literally to answer the question of uh, uh, Jews. The, the technology of uh, how time travel is done and uh, oh. what is the concept of uh, Ruh and what is the concept of 
you know, uh, what do you know about uh, the people of the caves? And uh, what is the whole story that you know? If you are a true prophet, you should know that. And then, of course, uh, tell us what you know about Dhulkarnayn. Now, that's not a regular question. That's not a question, you know, you just uh, exactly. throw out in the air. Uh, that's just, you know, try and ask him. That's one of those three tough things we don't know. So yeah. you one of the things that's famous about this is like, they threw these three questions because they believed that no one other than a prophet can answer them. Although the story of the seven sleepers was present in Christianity and has been present in many other cultures and civilizations as well. So if it was just a story they wanted to hear, so they, it doesn't prove him to be a prophet. But probably they all. wanted something else from him. Not at all, those, yeah, that's stories. correct. That's correct. Anyone could have told him them this story. Yeah. Well, even though that's not the one question that they asked. Yeah. But let's just stick to this question for one. Now we have the story of Alexander in other civilizations. No, and nobody believes. Well, nobody believes that. That's no, no, that's the, fine if they don't believe it. But even no, well, they in know what mythology, they, there is a story, right? The, there does uh, exist Osiris. a story of yeah, yeah, yeah. A story of seven sleepers as well. Yeah, but, but specifically sticking to the seven yeah. sleepers, yeah. everybody had a fair idea of what seven sleeper story is. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, at the time the Prophet was, people did attribute that Muhammad Sallam is a big reader and you know he steals stuff from here yeah. and there. Yeah. there it was and an he has a lot of yeah. mentors. Yeah. yeah, but that is not the time. This is not that time. You have to yeah. understand what is the time. Yeah. Now this is going to. Uh, let me just uh, start from the, the background of how, how this, these questions came about. So, uh, let me just uh, tell you what is the, 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 the pretext of Surah Kaf. Uh, the pretext of Surah Kaf is uh, inside the Ahadith. You'll have to look at it from, uh, you know, mm -hmm. reverse engineer as to what the Jews and the use of Surah Kaf in our psychology has in common. And then you'll understand why did the Jews come in? Okay, so uh, a, a little look, look into the history and then you, people will understand what's actually going on. Uh, Jews themselves uh, are waiting for their Messiah for, for, for ever since. Mm -hmm. So much so that you know, yeah. they're looking into so many signs of the Messiah. Yeah. Uh, and since uh, Jesus Christ did not live up to those signs, they were like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even though he should have because um, yeah. their, their Messiah is going to be imitating uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, however, they were told that, you know, uh, uh, your Messiah is going to come at such and such place. Such and such place would look like such and such uh, uh, area in the geography and so on and so forth. We have the story from uh, Salman Farsi's account as well. Yeah. Uh, people knew, you know, those Christians knew where the Prophet is going to He's come going in. To come, yeah. Yeah. He, it, it, dead on accuracy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So they were actually uh, following that, that prophecy of their own uh, and there was no other way of them coming to Medina. They were in Medina because they were already preparing for whatever is about to happen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they were looking for their Messiah. Yeah. Uh, now, what is uh, the Messiah going to do for them? You know what I'm saying? That's the real question. Why are they looking for their Messiah in terms of uh, you know, their own survival or their own purpose fulfillment, which is, you know, the capturing of the whole planet and making them live under their ruling and so on and so forth. So, it's because it's not a power of evil. Jews are still religious people who believe in, you know, uh, yeah. their monotheistic religion who actually think that, you know, they are very connected with God. Yeah. So, it's not like a satanic cult that they were trying to follow. Yeah. They're actually following a prophecy which yeah. is uh, to be fulfilled by their Messiah. Yeah. So, in other words, they have a little test of whoever claims to be a prophet, they're going to test, there's a messiah quiz that they're carrying. Okay. So, if that person can tell them accurately of what all of this is, then this man is our messiah because he will be able to use all of these three things. Okay. And so, if you reverse engineer these questions, you can know literally what the Jal is going to be doing. That's how important these three questions are because the Jal is going to do whatever they actually want, uh, their, their prophecy is. Hmm. Their prophecies are not wrong. Even we believe in their prophecy that the Jal is going to come and, you know, yeah. resurrect yeah, the Jews. Common, yeah. yeah, that's a common prophecy. So, so it's like, just like we have Dalailun Nabuwa. So they also have they Dalailun, Dalailun Nabuwa. They had Dalailun Dajjal, yeah. <laughs> but Dalailun Messiah, we <laughs> yeah. call it, Al-Masih, right? Yeah. So, and that is his name, Masih. He's going yeah. to be known Masih. as Masih. Yeah. The Prophet also calls him Masih. Uh, 
so what we what we really need to understand is that if Jews are testing our prophet, they must have tested many other prophets on that very template. And whoever does not fulfill that template does not know what the technology is and that that that's not going to fetch them anything. So the real question is well, not whether the Prophet knew this or not. Yeah. You understand me? The real question is that their Messiah is going to know these questions these and is going to answers. be able to use these technologies. Yeah. Hence, for 1400 years, we already know what the Dajjal is going to do. You have to it's understand that. Right. Yeah. Because they came in and they said, to, uh, recite to us Surah Kaf. Of course, they didn't say it. Yeah, they didn't say the word. But Kaf, whatever yeah. they said was all Surah Kaf. Because yeah. Surah Kaf came yeah. in yeah. to answer all these three questions. So, Ruh is the very concept. Ruh is the concept of light and, you know, uh, the, the source of all of that power. We yeah. think gravity is the power, but uh, in the Bible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let there be light. That's the first agency of creation and change. That's yeah. the balance of the universe. Yeah. We think gravity is the balance of the universe. But it doesn't really make sense because God never mentions the power of gravity. He mentions the power of light, light. before anything. Before anything. Yeah. Any matter. The element of light is created. Mm. Wow. We That's still, great. till date, science does not really know what light actually is. There are only theories about photons and you know how, how mm. they transmit or mm. carry whatever kind of information. Mm. But that's not a small matter when you think that, you know, the Jal is going to use the concept of light. And that's the first question they ask. What is ar You know what I'm saying? Now, there is a lot of commentary on what scholars think, what the Jews meant when they asked ar yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it's a little deeper than this because yeah. the next and, two questions yeah. are, are and also... Uh, yeah, and there's uh, some difference of opinion also, whether there was a question about ruh or it was something else. Yeah. There are only three questions, but it was a question about... The two gardens, yeah, but, or maybe the ruh. It's uh, yeah, but the but, you know most narrated uh, is about, about ruh. Yeah. So, so then next question is about uh, Sabe Kaf, the people of yeah. the cave, and the people of the cave story is something which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that uh, I'm, nobody knows how many they are except of Allah. Yeah, they think there was this, and you know there are. Contemporaries think that there there's so many, but yeah. only Allah knows how many. So there's yeah. there's a there's a there's a key there of how what, what kind of number of people, yeah. you know, yeah. have to be at a certain yeah. place to actually yeah. ha make that yeah. happen. Yeah. But you know, let's not go into that kind of detail right now. But the real question is Surah Kaf was revealed an answer to a certain question. And that certain question is a test of their Messiah. And the three questions were for Ruh, Ruh for Kaf, Sabi Kaf, Zulkarnain. and Zulkarnain. And okay. then they asked Zulkarnain, what's the link between the Sabi Kaf and Zulkarnain? Absolutely yeah. none. Yeah. Absolutely not. If you forget this incident, then there is no way of us knowing of why are these two incidents in the same surah. Yeah. You have to understand that. It is the, through the Jews, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us of why he put these two in the same chapter so of right. Al-Kahf. Right. So that means there is a very big link of what these two different concepts carry and of what, how are they... Uh, you know, similar and what kind of reminiscence is there between uh, Asabe Kaf hmm. or whatever happened to them hmm. and Zulkanen and whatever happened to him. Yeah. There is a very big and strong link. It's not a haphazard thrown question. You have to understand that. Yeah. It's the test of Messiah. And then there's a story of Musa and Khidr. Yeah, but they also. didn't ask that. So I'm not going there. Yeah. So well, that's another gift for the Muslims because yeah. Allah Ta'ala put a lot more. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they only so have many three. things to be understood. We have, we have so many, yeah. yeah. So, that so. is something related to Qadr. I think. Uh, not just Qadr. No, no. Not the first thing about the uh, story of Khizr yeah. is the portal. Yeah. The first thing that, uh, you know, that's another. It is as big of a concept uh, as it is in Surah Maraj. Because in this Surah, that's the only place Allah Ta'ala describes the shape of a portal. Yeah. Surah Kaf, we <laughs> have the shape of the portal. Okay. Now, this is something which is, uh, which is going to come up later. So, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. But right now, these Jews asked a certain question of Zulkarnayn. Hmm. And then the whole story of Zulkarnain is narrated in such detail that it carries a lot of meaning in this sort of uh, uh, use and application, but not as much detail as a story would be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we have a lot of stories in the Quran. They go in a lot more detail. Zulkarnain's story does not carry details. It carries codes. You know, it, it, it carries certain weight in the in, in, in those in those verses. Wow. We cannot narrate of who Zulkarnain was where. Yeah. What kind of a story is this? 
But we know of what he had and what did he do with his power. Where did he go at what weird point in time, weird place. Till date, I cannot find a satisfactory commentary on the Quran of how come the sun sets in the dark murky water. And probably only the person who did have an idea of that technology, only those people would be capable of understanding what Rasulullah is reciting. That's exactly what I mean. These, this is why Allah Ta'ala says, they actually recognize you as the father recognizes a son. son yeah. And now that's not a, yeah. another randomly chosen analogy. Yeah. That is a very crisp analogy of how yeah. a father uh, recognizes, recognizes a son. son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I will go in detail when we're going to do so. Yeah. Like this but recognition is so much... Uh, no, no, we're not. We're, not. we're just talking about we, the pretext here. We have to go through Surah Kahaf, uh, inshallah, verse by verse. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just saying, like, about a father recognizing son, like, even in old times, we know that after the war, if someone was really mutilated really badly and people were unable to uh, recognize who he is, either the, one of their parents would have to be called in to help, you know. So that's the level of accuracy that Allah SWT says that the Jews understood. So probably through this thing, they really knew that their Dalailun Nabuwa have fulfilled, you know. So yeah. that's another discussion why they still did not uh, accept him. Anyway, well, that's so one way of looking at it, uh, and that's the right way of looking at it. But if we can, we can actually look into it from a totally different perspective. That when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chooses the analogy of God uh, of a people of the Father recognizing a son, hmm. that would also mean that uh, they would know who the successor is, the real successor. You know, of of uh, who's going to be carrying the the Isra now, yeah. and they know now, now Isra is theirs. But since they didn't want to let go of the Isra, they're going to put the Isra in someone else. And that's also going to be one of their sons. Uh, which of course means the DNA. And that's why they're just playing around with this, uh, with this very concept of, you know... Uh, Can you explain this whole thing again? I, I, I didn't get it. Well, talking about... Uh, because there were two sons, Ishaq and... Yeah, yeah, no, well, that's, that's the, the common way of looking at it. Yeah. Of, you know, since Ishaq had the Isra, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, and Ismail did not have the Isra, and according to their books, of course. Isra? Isra is the, the crown. No, no, Isra is uh, Israel's, uh, Isra yeah. means the, the, the crown, ah, the kingdom. Okay. The kingdom mm -hmm. is with them. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Allah Ta'ala says they recognize that father recognizes the son, yeah. that means they know that now he's the successor. The father is gone, now oh. he's got the crown. The crown. Wow. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is something which is... Uh, Subhanallah. Yeah, which is a perfect analogy for, for them yeah. to understand that, you yeah. know what? Yeah. Your reign is gone. Your reign is all over. Yeah. Wow. They recognize the sun. Uh, again, you know, going that into detail, the real question is Surah Kaf's uh, actual uh, placement, uh, uh, sorry, the revelation came accor uh, according to a certain uh, incident. And that incident is the quiz, the Dajjal template, the, the Messiah test. And this is something which makes Surah Kaf so important. And knowing what happened, why it was revealed at a certain point, and what were the questions asked, is the most important thing about Surah Kaf. Okay. So, inshallah, I'm going to start Surah Kaf verse by verse. Uh, do you have any preference using any uh, uh, specific translation? Well, or should I, I just follow uh, Sahih International? Or? Just for, uh, for everybody's reference, I personally prefer... Uh, Abdul Halim's translation. He is uh, not only more equipped of handling the phrase of uh, Arabi and also the phrase of English, it, but uh, any other translation that I've gone through 11, of course, because we, we compare 11 through many websites now as well, the main top tens. Uh, most of the translations actually confuse uh, in the <coughs> phrasing of the, the, the English phrasing. And so it becomes a little tough for us to understand that. But Abdul Lim is something I prefer, but I don't really, uh, you know, have any uh, specification because we're going to be sticking to Arabic more than anything okay. else. So I'm going to be only reading the translation. Okay. So you have to stop me wherever you have to make a point. Sure. Okay. So Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So the first ayah starts with, uh, All praise is due to Allah who has sent down upon His servant the book and has not made therein any deviance. He has made it straight to warn of severe punishment from him and to give good tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that they will have a good reward, in which they will remain forever. 
and to warn those who say Allah has taken a son. Yeah, that's, that's where you should stop now. Okay. See, the first two, three things are basically psychological settings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to understand we are only talking in terms of Ad-Dajjal, yeah. the time of Dajjal. Yes. So, when, uh, when the first ten uh, ayahs are to be the most authentic reference, that these are the ten ayahs which are going yeah. to have the, the actual shield against uh, Dajjal. Dajjal yeah. So, we really need to understand of what… Uh, what is going to be happening during the time of the Jal. In the first episode, we did cover of what's uh, yeah. that's the map going to look like. Yeah. So these uh, ayahs, if you look at them clearly, you can actually see that uh, belief in the, the book, the Quran, is the first thing that we have to understand that there is absolute perfection in this. So there will be the first fitting of how to confuse Quran. As that's, there are some good things, 